we're on the journey of healing. I don't want to hold grudges, but we're talking so we can share that we're not, people are not alone, that yeah. we all have different, yeah. yeah, we all have different situations with our parents and whether mine are, are narcissistic or not, I think my dad definitely is. Um, I feel like my dad definitely is is one of the pioneers. <laughs> no, right, right, definitely right. The grandiose. I think it's the grandiose narcissist. The grandiose. Yeah. He might be a little malignant. He's a little mean. He's a little mean. When I it can't comes say to malignant. Him. Mine is not malignant. Mine really, I think, genuinely means well. He feeds everything that walks into our backyard. Um, anything that oh, yeah, he's a sweetheart when it comes I, to that it's not mine <laughs> no mine wants to save everybody help everybody i think is the grand is, your dad, uh, is he one of many children yes the youngest uh, oh my he, dad is in the middle somewhere and a twin at that oh wow i remember you telling me about the oh funeral. yeah yeah my dad uh <laughs> My dad's uh performed brother is no longer with us and he made a whole show at the funeral. He's he made it about him. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I couldn't like... believe that his brother was right there next to him and he's crying for him. And then he turns around and tells a story about how he was the older one, he was the stronger one, he was the smarter one. What? Like I was appalled. I was like, somebody picked my jaw up. You were like, but, what just happened? What is going on here? Yeah, and he was just, you know, and then he was telling all his his brother's church friends this. Hi, yo, man. First time meeting them. Wow. You know, talking about how he brought his whole family. Yes, you brought your whole family to the States. That's wonderful. But everybody knows the story already, sir. Mm -hmm. Everybody <laughs> knows all the sacrifices you made. Right. Everybody right. knows, you know, it's okay. You don't got to repeat it. Right, right, right. And is then it, he makes it seem like, oh, they're not grateful to me. They don't look for me. Oh, it's this big old thing. Mm -hmm. I've, I've, mm -hmm. I ain't even. <laughs> I'm not going down that route. Nope. It's, <laughs> not even. So this is the thing. They help, and then they complain about helping. Oh yeah, and you gotta they know do, they did it. Yeah, they do stuff, and you need to make sure they know all the time how grateful you are. Yes. Thank you so much. That was amazing. You just got to keep them. You got to keep watering their, their right. ego. Right, right. Well, like recently I was just, I was told, uh, why don't you go downstairs to your free apartment? Oh, um, man. I was that like, was my dad's favorite line. It's a, it's a no hotel. You don't come in and out when you want. I'm like, bro, what? what? So, I had rules. I was 21 talking about you got to be home by midnight and pay rent. I was a little confused by all that. <laughs> so I just moved out. Never went back. Like, okay, that, right. I might as well leave. I'm like, hmm, that's not going to work. Like, I'm not paying rent and coming <laughs> home at midnight at 21. You're so funny. Yeah, I, I, I left and I never went back. No, I still and, follow the rules. I'm 40 years old and I'm admitting this in front of everybody. My mom be like, where you at? Your dog needs you. Come home, the dog. And I'm like, are you freaking serious right now? The dog needs me? He's not my kid. I was like, you guys could take the dog. Like, it was always a control. It still oh, is. Yeah. Hey, oh, yeah. Like, bro, where you at? Why aren't you here? This, that. I'm like, they can't live without me. They've said it already. If they go to retire down to somewhere else, they need me to move. I'm like, why do I need to uproot my whole last life? Because you're about to retire and move down yeah. somewhere else. It's, it's comical. Because I'm just like, you're telling me to come home because the dog misses me. Let me feel the dog told them that. <laughs> dog told them that he misses me. So then after a while, I was like, take the dog with you. So like the dog is no longer my dog. <laughs> he's yeah, yeah. Now he's like, Grr. every time I try to take him from my dad, he's like, Grr, your brother now. <laughs> no, for real. I was like, then I switched up real quick. I said, you are a betrayer. I said, you're a traitor. I was like, that's <laughs> fine though. I was like, you can stay with your guillies. I was like, that's all good. Nah, my dad oh. loves it a lot and my dad plays with him like all the time but that's what I'm saying like there's I still see so much good and and at least at this age I'll say right there's been transformation mm -hmm. I have seen growth I have seen wanting to do better I have seen him yeah. energetic which I'm like thank you so much like this is new right because when I was younger he was apologetic but this time he's like really trying to do things differently. Recently he came down like a tornado. Ah, I can't believe it. Blah, 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 to fix something down here. 
And then like 20 minutes later, he's like, I'm so sorry. He's like, you were so calm down there. You were cooking, enjoying your music. And I come in like a hurricane and disrupt everything. The fact that he acknowledged that to me is a blessing. I was like, wow, you acknowledge that you stir stuff up and you are the chaos. And for no reason. Like who are you fighting with? You're fighting with the with a with a one of these tiles. That's because now he's not well and he doesn't want to admit that he's not well. So he's pissed off and fighting with one of these tiles. And I'm like, ask for help. I'm here. Right. Like don't you don't have to struggle by yourself i've always mm-hmm. been here for them and i don't want them to continue to struggle regardless of what you know childhood dramas and things that i'm still healing and figuring out i still love them at the end of the day you know what i'm saying just like you and like we all do and some people I mean, have a lot of good like i do say that when it comes to like my work ethic when it comes to me like being you know, I want this and I'm going for it. I did get those things from my dad. There's a lot of good things that we do get. Right. right. We did. You know, the generosity, I swear, because he's super generous and his work ethic. I definitely got my dad's work ethic. He's a workhorse. Mm -hmm. There's nobody who makes, he makes sure that his family's good. Even his family out in PR, anybody that needs something, you can't say I need because my dad's already there for you. You know, so there in all of that there's still good and that's what i like to hold on to and that's what i think i've been telling some of the people that i've been talking to lately i'm like remember the good things right because you don't want to hold on to all the negative because that negative is just going to keep you in bitter right like bitterness resentment pain and you're still going to keep reliving those traumas so you know as painful as it is it's good like if the parent passed away writing letters to yourself journaling Mm -hmm. Um, maybe even like my therapist or somebody, I think it was my life coach two or three years ago. He said to me, write a letter to yourself, um, and write it to your child self Mm -hmm. yourself. And basically you're going to help whatever it is that you wanted to hear as a child, write it to yourself. We got to hear, heal our inner child. Like the, that's, that's the the first step Mm -hmm. to you know, finding that true happiness, I feel, right. and that understanding, right? What's really going on? Mm-hmm. Get down to the to the deep root, and I'm, I'm. Some people don't even know what an inner child is. No. You know, you got to start with the bases. You gotta, you gotta go back into time. You gotta go back and and figure out what it is that took place right. that triggers you or affects you or 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 what you were lacking that now affects your life and like you said write that letter talk to yourself talk to yourself as a child child. take a picture of yourself as a child and talk to it every day I have a picture of myself when I was like six or seven I look so cute and I'm like it's okay I'm here I got you now we're gonna do this oh yeah you gotta say it all but yeah yeah yeah. you gotta say I love you to that little child you gotta you gotta gotta literally I, I told I had a picture I'm like I wish I could hold myself as a baby Oh, yeah. yeah. And and that's the thing, right? Because I was doing the same thing. I had a little picture of myself as five or six years old, maybe even four, like little, little. And I was like, everything's going to be OK. You know, you're going to be. And I'm like, I love you. Yeah, absolutely. because yeah. I would be scared. I would run to my room when my dad came in with the chaos, the craziness, the drunkenness, yeah. slamming, breaking shit, talking to my mom like my mom wasn't even a human it was just right. he was like her punching back like no, what is was, going on it here veneno it was poison what came out of his mouth and sometimes i swear as a kid i used to say that i swear he was possessed by something else like a demonic spirit and i i mean i grew up christian so i would see it as a demonic like something took over my dad because he would be someone else yeah. And the next day, he's like, "Yo, what? I don't remember that. Mm-hmm. Like, what did that happen? Yeah, like nothing. Like making a joke. Like what? You weren't there yesterday, yeah, bro. You weren't with us. And he'd be like, ah, like, like just yeah. get over. Like what you mean? Yeah, exactly. I'm like, bro, you just had us shit in our pants the night before. Mm-hmm. in my room scared i would put the music on that's why music and me are besties i'll yeah. put the music on blast and i would just 
go quiet, turn the door, like to turn the lights off, lock the door and blast my music. That was my sanity. That was my sanctuary, my art, my room, my room or my car have always been my go-to for me to escape. And I would just disappear in my own world. Me, I wanted to be outside all the time. Right. Because, yeah, Cause you know, that, 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 that yelling just enclosed thing for no for for no real reason. Like dishes in the sink for too long. If you left the cup there for too long, it was if it didn't like it, it wasn't right. That's it, it was tough. He's gotten better. He has, you know, like I said, he's in a different stage in his life. He's leaning more towards the Lord and forgiveness. And, you know, he still talks about himself, but it's not as, you know, as intense. Like he needs so much. It's more like, don't forget about me. Now. But now it's into that stage. Right, 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 right. Remember me for all my good, even though he's not right. gone. Right, right. No, you know, one one thing that my therapist did with me that I don't know if yours has mentioned yet, because I know you are a little bit newer. I'm probably three years in now. And um, my therapist had, when you were a child, there were certain moments and there was one in particular that I had brought up this day. And I said, I remember my dad saying this this and that and she's like oh my god like that must have been so scary for you she's like all right what i want you to do is visualize yourself at the table in the kitchen and i need you to feel what you're feeling and i legit i i closed my eyes and i literally was reliving that moment she's like where do you feel it the fever mm. and all of that where in your body do you feel it here do you feel it where? and she's like I need you to work through that and she's like and I want you to tell yourself everything's going to be okay that you know you're loved and all like she told me a few things to say to myself and I remember crying mm. I released it I released that's, it that's amazing. that's amazing that's almost like a form of what is that therapy? I, I was trying, it's kind of harder to find uh, EMDR. I think it is so, where they kind of take you back to the yeah. situation and you got to kind of face it. Yes. I yes. Think that's a, it's a type of therapy. Not a lot of people do it, but it's kind of harder to find. But if you have, I feel like if people have really traumatic things that they just resign, like they're constantly thinking about or it affects them that that type of therapy is supposed to tap in and kind of help you release well, let me tell you, it was, she was great. I mean, I still awesome. can feel the moment. Like, I don't feel the moment like I did that day. I think about it. I remember what was going on. I was terrified. Like, I swear, I thought the guy was was possessed by a demon. Like, his eyes were so bloodshot red. And it didn't look like my dad. It looked like wow. something completely different. And so, like, I don't even know that he remembers the thing. But he was like, I'm going to kill you and your mother and I'm going to kill myself. Terrified. I was terrified. I think I was 11 years old. I was sitting at the kitchen table. He came in drunk and lifted the table while I was eating. My food mm. flew. Mm. My mom didn't mm. know what the hell was going on. She was kind of like, what is going on? We're both like just minding our own business, eating in the kitchen dinner, mm -hmm. whatever the table. And he looked possessed it was so scary for me like literally I can't even describe how evil his eyes looked mm. and I went to my room and I just started praying and praying I was terrified that my dad was gonna kill us and you know you see these shows you see these programs where the father or the mother they flip shit or the kid or whatever and they mm -hmm. kill the family the whole family so i was thinking that was gonna be us you know wow. and he was even saying i'll drive over to, i'll drive myself off a cliff and he was talking about what he was going to do it was scary um so that traumatized the you held that and you held all that in i'm sure you were very anxious and all of that with that constantly thinking what could be of this yeah and probably nobody really you know i'm sure nobody else remembers it i remember maybe my mom doesn't remember maybe he doesn't remember i forgive him i forgive them for me being in that situation but it was traumatic living yeah. on like is this gonna you be still have that memory i mean you worked through it but you could still go back Feel, I still like right now I thought I was good but I was like yo I relived that crap and it's scary because you know is this the day that he's gonna flip you know and I always wondered is this the day so like as a kid not just regular eggshells 
Is this the day he's going to decide to do that? Terrifying. Wow. Terrifying. That is terrifying. That is terrifying. I would lock but myself I... in the room. Lock myself in the room. And then I was always questioning, well, why the hell am I here? Why did they have me? Right. right? I don't know if you ever had those moments. I'm like, why did they have me? I used to always hear them say, when you're 18, we're getting right. a divorce. And then I was like, well, what happened? They they just literally last week, 48 years married. I'm wow. like, wow, I can't believe you guys made it. This <laughs> I don't even understand it. Yeah, but I don't know. Either, but the way the that, they, that they, my dad was able to kind of mold it from the beginning, I guess it worked for him. Because any other woman, they would have been married. Well, my, my poor mom, my poor mom has dealt with a lot. And I feel that all of that, all of that that she carried has affected her health. She's got a lot of health issues. A lot of health issues. Oh, hello. Preach. Preach. And he, he's fine. Uh -huh. He got a couple of things, you know, a little high blood pressure. But for the most part, my mom has all of the ailments, all of the things. From all the stress. Like a sponge. And that breaks my heart. That breaks my heart because it's almost like she knows no other life at this point. That's crazy. You know, I think about their age gap and what's going to happen right. at some point. Yeah. Who knows? I mean, you never know who's going to go first, but if God forbid, like, there, there is a gap. Mm -hmm. And so my mom start living then? Will my mom even know what to do with herself? Probably not. They usually yeah. don't. They usually don't. And will, they, will she forgive herself for holding on that long? Will she have that? That, right. gave, that that right. you know anger towards herself maybe i should right. for not leaving for not, not leaving. doing more for herself not becoming not seeing what it was right 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 but i'm actually re i'm in the middle of uh, i have an audio book you know that i i am starting to get into what's called uh it didn't start with you wow and it talks about generational trauma and how sometimes the things we feel has just been passed down to us through, you know, DNA and genetics and all that. It could have been something our grandmother experienced that we're constantly holding on to that we don't know because we don't have. Like, for instance, I don't know nothing about like how my dad really grew up, how his everyday was, how he was really treated. I know little stories, but I don't know the actual relationships so we don't know what other people experience and we might be holding on to that wasn't even a part of us i agree 100 percent. and i heard that recently actually that our dna genetically we have trauma from how many generations maybe four or five yeah, yeah. you know what our ancestors went through our grandparents great-grandparents and i you know now talking about it i love all these conversations this is so awesome that Looking back, it could have been what happened to my pops and mm -hmm. even my mom, like her stuff, because yeah. Yeah, we're, we're carrying what they held on to. They didn't on top talk of about what it. we dealt with. And the thing is, they didn't talk about it. It was hush, hush. Ah, eso no se dice. You don't talk about right. these things or, oh, well, get over it. Move on. You know, but we, we can't keep wiping things, you know, like not wiping, but like sweeping things under the rug. We can't. We have to talk about it. We have to stop and break the cycle. Like you said, we cannot like, let's say you and I were to have a child or whatever. We can't continue this cycle. Even if we don't like we cannot, even if you have nieces, nephews, whatever, like we cannot continue to put this trauma on the next generation. So, you know, it's not fair. And I also feel that, you know, being around other people that have had trauma and have children, I think with them, our generation that has dealt with so much from our parents, they're either one of two ways. From what I've noticed, they're either the same way mm. or they're giving their kids too much. Right. That I've seen the too, too much. much, like everything, everything, everything I didn't have. And then you're also creating a monster because title. now these children think the world, they, the world owes them and they, every, everything has to be given to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then their partners suffer because they cannot fulfill these shoes because mm -hmm. of like, you know, it's just it, all these cycles that we have to learn how to balance and create, you know, just 
a little bit more peace in our lives. That's all we got to work towards. I agree. I agree. And like, to your point, right, I um realized that with all the stuff, it created a lot of illnesses in my body, just like my mom's body, you know, from all the bull crap. And the guy barely has anything. I love him dearly. Yeah. But he barely has much, you know, um, was so excited recently when he found out his liver and his kidneys were good from all the drinking he's had forever. He was like, oh, well, my liver and kidney are good. Well, that means I'm going to keep drinking. I'm like, dude, you got to take your medication. You don't want to take your medication. But my poor mom, like all the stuff she's got to take on a regular just to relax. And now recently with him getting diagnosed with something, she's just like, yo, I'm sad for him. Like, I feel bad for him. I'm like, so do I, but what are we going to do if he doesn't want to take his medication? That's another, like, whatever. So right. the whole point of that was all the extra stress and all that, that caused the body autoimmune conditions. So for yeah. the people out there, lupus, people get lupus from abuse, childhood, or even in adulthood, people get fibromyalgia, people get rheumatoid arthritis. I have PCOS, Hashimoto's mm -hmm. and thyroid conditions are all triggered by stress and trauma. I'm well, dealing with gastro issues right now because I, I, you know, the daily stresses where I'm over here trying to navigate, right, right, how to live my life, right, and try to heal at the same time is a lot. Sometimes well, you have to make time for you, and you got to relax because that the body absorbs all your thoughts, and you're feeling it. It's a book that my friend was. Brain is like the brain is sending all the. Yo, you want to think about this? Bam, bam. Yeah. Well, my friend was just saying to me recently that there's a book that she recommends. It's called The Body Keeps Score. Yes, I actually, I, I had the audio. It's such a great book. It talks about that EMDR I'm talking about too. It, it, it's it's a real wonderful book. I recommend it to anybody who wants a, a, a kind of a little synopsis of what may be going on with them that they had no idea. Yeah, I, I got to check it out for sure, because of course, like, so the whole thing was my healing has gone. All right. I need therapy. Okay, cool. I've been doing therapy. I was in the middle of a divorce too. I was going through, I had lost a baby. I was processing all of that. That was a few years back, but like my body, everything changed and it was so sudden, you know, I got sick. I couldn't stay working. I had to close my first business. It was like one thing after another, after another, after another, that even my own mother was like, oh, it seems like somebody put voodoo or witchcraft on you. Like you just been going through so much. My mm -hmm. body shut down. It was like a nervous breakdown because people don't realize all this stress creates chaos in the body. Your nervous mm -hmm. system is disrupted. Your sleep is disrupted. Your autoimmune, your adrenal glands, all of that. So I realized, okay, I got to go to therapy wants therapy and I got to figure out how am I going to heal the body? I had gone vegan. Vegan wasn't working for me at the time because I was still sick. I was still messed up. So you got to deal with the emotional stuff, the mental stuff. Then the physical transformation comes in, which is where I'm at now. Now right. I'm losing the weight. Now I'm eating better because I'm taking care of the stresses. I'm, I know now how to deal with certain situations, you know, detach yourself. You're recognizing them more and more. That too, you know, she, my therapist was like, oh my God, you're able to acknowledge this so much faster than before. And I'm like, absolutely. And the thing is, we know what to do. It's just a matter of someone telling you. And then you're like, yeah, that's exactly what I was, you know what I mean? Or like reminding you, mm -hmm. to take care of yourself. Don't forget to go to sleep early. Don't forget to eat healthy. Don't forget to go and do meditation and yoga. And so I remember I used to listen to a lot of um, positive affirmations. That was my yeah. thing. Because I always felt I wasn't good enough. I'm not worthy. And I never got the validation, right? Because it's like, okay, what are you doing next? And I always felt like I had to do more to prove mm -hmm. to my parents that I was worthy of right. their attention or their time. Because their time was always on other stuff. Yeah, they were there. But were they there? They were not really always there there. They were there, but not there. Yeah, I totally get it. And people say, oh, but you're an only child and you have this and you have everything. I'm like, I don't care about material crap. Like people always are like, material, you have this, you had that, you did that, that, that. That doesn't matter when you want quality time, when you want to have attention from like, yo, let's go. When you want somebody to ask, how was school? Do you have homework? Do you need help? Mm -hmm. Are you having any troubles there? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, the little things. 
Yep. So my room, my room was my place and I used to write. And that was another thing. Writing is good. Like you said, journaling and all that stuff, all these things help. And like, you know, hopefully somebody will take stuff from us here and they'll apply it for their, you know, for their life. You know, I remember because of the daddy issues, I was always trying to find someone outside of myself to fulfill me. Mm -hmm. I had to realize I need to love myself. That was where the positive affirmation I was doing the same thing. All that attention. I didn't get all that love. Like I was always trying to find somebody that would, would just be like, Oh my God. And just, you know, give me all that validation. Mm -hmm. Like you said, and also to come rescue you. Right. Mm -hmm. Because that's what you felt like. You need somebody to come rescue you rescue. Like, you know, the, the Disney movie Rapunzel and all those movies and oh, yeah. save the princess. Like I was waiting for somebody to come save me, but there was nobody coming. Nobody. So I had to figure it out. And that's where we start setting like these expectations. We want this, this and that. And we just have to worry about what we're giving. And mm -hmm. then, you know, if everybody does their part, It'll be a better place, as they say. Right. Absolutely. Even if friendships, relationships, all the above. Work, work environments. Everything. Yeah. Like it, it's, it's, you know, I love that I'm getting older. I love that I'm seeing so many more things. And I love the fact that I want to help others, you know, right. because it, life is hard. Life is not easy. Everybody wakes up with their own stresses, their own things they got going on. And sometimes you just need to hear, uh, 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 you know, a different point of view to kind of see things in a different light, you know? And also people on the outside can see you and not really know what you've been through, right? right. Because on social media or like to the outside world, everybody's like, oh, their life is picture perfect. Mm -hmm. They don't realize what people are going through internally. They right? don't realize that you're sad sometimes. You feel lonely sometimes. You feel empty. You feel lost. Mm -hmm. And all because we're trying to navigate what happened to us. Or trying to figure out what happened even before us, like we mentioned. Right. And then all the relationships we got into to try to compensate, to try to make ourselves feel the whole, like whole, because we felt like we were missing something. So yeah, I, I remember finding myself bending over backwards, trying to just look at me. I'm so, I, I could do all this for you just because I wanted that love so bad. And it was with the wrong people. It was always with the um, emotionally unavailable people. Bingo. Emotionally unavailable people. That was my pattern too. Yeah. 100%. I mean, and maybe it still is my pattern. You know, I'm still working on it. I have Absolutely. a tendency yeah. of, yeah, like I have a tendency of drawing in the wrong people always. And um, it's scary, right? Because then it's almost like, do we date anymore? Do we just stop dating? Because it's like, how do we know that it's genuine or we're trying to fill in the void or a gap for something? Like, are we fully mm -hmm. healed? And then it's mm -hmm. like, well, how long does it take for us to heal? We can't take forever to heal. So it's just so many of these, like, um, these battles, right, that we go through. Like, we're constantly like, okay, is this good? Is this not? And then as soon as you see a trigger in somebody or something that is going to cause, like, a red flag or whatever, we're kind of like, okay is this like my ex or is this like my father is this like my mother like you know we see things and we get terrified mm -hmm. God, is mm -hmm. this person safe are they not safe or yeah. they're so toxic should but I they take a do? chance should I not are they worth it am I should I be invested in this I've been down this road before yeah all this stuff or do we continue with the emotionally unavailable people because it feels safe it feels right. comfortable that's our yeah that's our our, our what we know that's what we're used to. That's yeah. nuts, man. It's nuts. Or emotionally yeah. immature people too. Oh, that's, that's another, another one. It's another book. There's a, actually a book uh, about that as well. Adult children of um emotionally. Well, I actually have it over there. I we gotta put the links in the bottom. You should, yeah, definitely. It's about parents that are emotionally um available. Or immature. Immature. I think it's immature. Immature. my friend sent me the pdf yes it's it's got so many i have to finish that one too that one i actually have the hard copy but yeah. it's deep it's deep you start seeing stories you know you gotta i don't recommend reading it all like because right. it's gonna start hitting points and you gotta process that that's what people need to understand too when you start doing the work it's gonna get ugly you're gonna have to go down to some pads you're gonna have to possibly cry you're gonna have to possibly you know 
allow yourself to break down and be vulnerable and be okay with that in order to rebuild again. Right, right. You have to tear it all down, the old, old all the way back down to the foundation and start from there up. That's so true. That's so freaking deep. Yeah. And again, I'm grateful for my parents. You know, I um I wouldn't be here without them. Absolutely. And, you know, over the years I've had some words of wisdom from them. And, you know, as they've gotten older, they've gotten better, you know, as far as in their communication style and, you know, they've gotten better. Trust me, way better. But um, you know, we're all learning. And I think that's what's cool in my situation. Like my parents are are healing themselves, at least mm -hmm. they're trying. Whatever that looks like for them, they're trying to do something a little bit differently. And I see that. And I don't know, like, how much astrology and stuff you follow, but there's this saying that we're in the age of Aquarius or on the verge. And so basically Aquarius is where wisdom comes down and people start to transform and wanting to change. Dang, that's amazing. I need all of that energy yeah, I'm yeah. for that. Yeah, and Aquarius too, that water pitcher that they're pouring out, that water is supposed to be wisdom. And that's what we're all getting. We're getting wisdom. We're getting downloads. We're getting information that we wouldn't have had access to many years ago to understand that this is what the cycle means. How do we heal from it? Okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to meditate. We're going to do this. We're gonna... So all these events, we're, we're all learning and growing. Not all, but I want to say there's a good chunk of people in the world that are really looking for this kind of information and people are growing, people are changing. And I've seen yeah, it. We're becoming more aware of our needs. That too. Yep. Yep. And we need to listen, listen to what we need. Our body, we need to listen to our body. Yep. It's hard to do. A yep. lot of people don't know. You know what? A lot of people you ask them, you ask them about themselves and they don't even know what to say. Right. What do you like to do? I don't know. What do you like to eat? I don't know everything like they can't they don't really know themselves and what did jesus say to know thyself that's right that's the number one thing you have to get in tune with yourself mm -hmm. and face people... all those things you're running from stop putting them on the back burner because you you can't outrun what's there it's always going to be there if you don't do the work it's just in the back of your brain it's just in the, it's it's always going to linger right we have to know ourselves and know ourselves separate from everybody else, all societal influences, all, all kinds of influences from childhood, teenage, college years, all the different times. Like, you know, we get, we pick up from everybody and everywhere and societally, we don't know who we are. Right. We're who we think we're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Right. It's, it's, it's a good day and age and it's a bad day and age because a lot of people are taking some of this social media to another level where they're also looking for that validation through that and they're not being their real selves right so, right yeah they're using putting... it in for the other good as well people <laughs> yeah i gotta filter out you gotta use discernment when we're on the internet and we're, and we gotta know. You can have your fun but there's there's good things out here too mm -hmm. yep absolutely but this is actually is great i am glad that we got to to do this and um you know i shared a little bit of my story you know i wanna i wanna be able to continue to help others give examples let them know that they're not alone you know we're all working towards the betterment of ourselves we're here for you guys whatever you guys want to talk you got some suggestions you have questions ideas um, anything you guys want us to focus on any future episodes anybody want to be featured um, everything. We're a community. We're a family. Absolutely. And again, we're not here to bash nobody. Everybody did the best they could. And, um, yeah, we're just really trying to work at the healing process and helping everybody along the way. And like you said, there's other guests that we're going to have and featured and all that. So hopefully like in that same thing, because I talked about astrology, hopefully, our next guest will be interesting for people at some point. Uh, he's into birth charts and astrology. Hey, hey, hey. And um, we'll give people a breakdown a little bit of what made him go the spiritual route. 
also grew up in a similar thing as us. Like, you know, I, the more people I talk to, the more people I realize have had similar upbringings. And a lot of them are Hispanic Latino people. A lot of them. Can I ask you from the people that you know, were um, some of them or the majority of them, their parents migrants? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. That's another thing. That's what I'm I saying. Is that it affects because my parents migrated over. Mm -hmm. Is it is it that? Yep. They, where they, I feel like they didn't have the time to do what they needed to do with us because they were so busy trans, <laughs> you know, transferring yeah. over and adapting to a new life. Yes. We also have to take that into consideration. A hundred percent. We were born here. We grew up in this, and they had to adapt to this. Oh, yeah. My dad talked about the stories of how they were so race racist to him when he first got here from Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. they, they called him the spick word, which is negative. So guys, don't repeat that to any Hispanic or Latino out there. But, you know, my dad felt so bad and he didn't speak the language very well. And he tried to defend himself every day. And people were really, really hard to him. You know, they were hard on him. And not only that, um, they didn't get the same wages that the people that were born and raised here of a different ethnic background, you know, like my dad used to fight for that too. So there's so many things he had to battle daily. And I think that could have also caused or added to the frustration of trying to be a provider, not getting the equal pay because he didn't look a certain way or didn't speak the language as well. And he's trying to figure out how to balance a family, home life, all of this, not do his music because that was his dream. So there must have been a lot plus his childhood. He lost his mom and that young so like to see all of that yeah man all these things like you just mentioned had to have a major effect on them yeah I had to that's crazy i wish that i could if, speak to my parents more about this but i feel like they're they, they don't understand or, or grasp where i'm trying to get at like my mom will probably get very like oh, very like you know <laughs> defensive in a sense like scared of what i'm gonna ask because she doesn't want to she wants to you know she knows she she did the best she could but she doesn't want me to like to to i guess be mad or to to put blame which i'm not i'm just trying to understand more than anything right but automatically they kind of get no yeah no that's but, my mom too my mom doesn't like to talk about it she's like no no yeah they have so leave that in the past yeah. like let's not keep bringing that up we did the best we can you have everything that you need and want and then something and i'm like i get mm -hmm. that i get that but that doesn't take away from the fact that there were things that we didn't have to go through absolutely that I, i've been spending all my life trying to figure out how to overcome certain things that i didn't even realize were from childhood right <laughs> I didn't realize I didn't realize a lot of things up until the last couple of years right. that were from my childhood. I thought that was done and over with. It's right. never done. It's always with you. It's always with you. It's like a backpack and you're just mm -hmm. keep adding a rock to it. And unless you deal with those rocks, that thing keeps getting heavier and heavier and heavier. So I think, you know, we're on the right path. And I think that we're hopefully going to do a lot of good, you know, and we're going to unpack that backpack and start getting yes. that weight off, you know, our shoulders and, you know, transform, become the people that we were meant to be because we all have a purpose. We came here for a purpose and we have to fulfill that before we go back to wherever we came from. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So let's continue the good work, people. Let's continue yes. looking to be better one day at a time. Mm -hmm. No rush. <laughs> Thank you all for being with us. We truly appreciate you. Yes. Um, thank you for listening to our stories. Yes. Thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. And like I said, we're here for you. Whatever you want to talk about, whatever you want to hear. Yep, definitely. What she said, I'm just in agreement. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all. So um, we're going to end it now. And uh, yes. we'll talk to you guys the next time. See you soon. <laughs>